Hi everyone, coming up on this week's Pet Stop, dogs in heat. And we're not talking about mating, we're talking about how to keep them safe in the scorching Jersey summer. We'll also have our Pet of the Week and some great animals in need of homes, so let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Pet Stop. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich from the American Animal Hospital in Randolph. Well, you might think it's no big deal to run into the Quick Checker 7-Eleven for five or 10 minutes while your dog stays in your car. Well, in the heat of the summer, it's a very big deal. You could be putting your dog's life in jeopardy. Joining me now is someone who has had to save a number of pets from hot cars, St. Hubert's Animal Control Officer Liz DeBaugh. Welcome to the show, Liz. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You've got a tough job as an ACO, as they call them, Animal Control Officer. Yes, it's not easy, but I enjoy it. And how did you get your training? Um, I'm trained through uh, Career Development Institute, which is an organization based out of New Jersey for certifying individuals with Animal Control Officer Association, as well as the Animal Cruelty Investigation. All right. Well, good for you. It's a, it's great to have you on board at St. Hubert's. Thank you. Yeah. And we have Mia, Mia Breitstein on the stage yes. here. And you can see Mia, she was standing a while ago, and now she's a little tuckered out. And you can see by her graying muzzle, she's a, she's a prime candidate for, uh, for have, getting into trouble in these hot cars, isn't she? Absolutely. With her thick black coat, she's, she's definitely um, one of the prototypes, one of the types of dogs that we think is a danger to being left in a car. Absolutely. A Tell us, Liz, some of your uh, uh, encounters with uh, dogs in trouble with hot, hot cars and uh, well, in, some in the of the, state. Some of the situations that we've encountered, um, my shelter is based right next to a diner down the street from a community college. Oh, so you're North, North Branch. Correct, uh, yes. North Madison, right? Exactly, so yes. Um, we have a large ShopRite plaza down the street from us. Mm -hmm. So a few times a summer, we have calls uh, from people concerned with dogs that they see in parking lots. Um, so we're always concerned about the welfare of animals, especially in the hot summer sun. What is a person to do if they're just kind of passing by, they've parked their car and they're just passing by and they see that uh, there's a dog in, in mm -hmm. trouble, you know, uh, with, with uh, the heat and, and they're panting excessively? Well, you can never be too cautious when it comes to animals in cars. Um, one thing that we do stress is if you see something, say something. You can never be too too worried whether or not you're going to get in trouble, whether or not you're going to annoy the owner of the dog. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the dog is happy and healthy in the car. We want to make sure that they're not at risk for any heat stroke. Sure. It can happen very su very suddenly. And, and a colleague and friend of mine uh, in northern New Jersey very recently uh, had a dog come in and this poor dog, you know, normal body temperature, as uh, folks should know, is 102 degrees for a dog and a cat, and 101, 102. And this poor dog came in at 107 and a half. Mm. So the brain starts starts frying above 106, and this poor dog, everything that they did to help just didn't didn't make it. Mm -hmm. You know, died. Mm -hmm. um, you have this fancy tool next to you. Tell us about it. Correct. Um, this is an infrared thermometer. Uh, we use it to gauge the temperatures of cars when we can't get into the cars themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much just a laser pointer that we shoot into the car, and it gives us a reading of the temperature inside the car. Interesting. So. Uh, definitely helps us out, lets us know exactly how hot it is in the car and whether or not we need to get an animal out. Right. And so when do you press the panic button? Uh this is registering 67 degrees here now, so yes. it's pretty nice um, and cool. If you actually, if you flash it between a shadowed, um, a shadowed part and a sunny part in the car, you're going to get two different readings. So we always shoot it for where the the sun is hitting the car. Sure, so. sure. Mm -hmm. And and what are some of the temperatures you you've been registering? Uh, the highest temperature I've ever seen is 120 degrees. It doesn't take long to get there. Uh, Not at either, all. Is it? No. Um, according to the ASPCA, uh, they've registered on an 80 degree day. They've seen cars get up to 120 degrees when within it's only a half 80, hour. One Correct. and a half hour. So that's, yes. that's uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. So what? So what's your next step? What do you do, Liz? Um, well, the next step is we immediately have to assess the the what the dog is showing, any signs or symptoms of heat stroke, whether they're panting, if they seem distressed. Sometimes they can go into shock or seizures. Um, we look at how their mouth is colored, whether if it's a darker color or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, if there is a sign that we're concerned about for heat stroke, we'll have the police assist us with actually breaking the window and getting access to the animal. Yeah, good, good. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned color, and that's very important. And uh, when, when veterinarians, and we ask a client about their, their dog's color, mm -hmm. uh, we're not talking about their black coat, we're talking about their mm -hmm. mucous membranes, as Absolutely. you were alluding to. And if you have a chow chow, you're out of luck because they're black. But yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, some dogs have pigmentation, but we're talking about it. We want a nice pink, healthy pink color. Mm -hmm. We want to press the gums and find out if the 
color comes back within a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. the quicker the better mm -hmm. to make sure that they're not in shock and if their circulation is okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us uh, some of the numbers. How quickly does a car heat up? Um, well, like I said before, on an 80 degree day, a car can heat up within 10 minutes to 100 degrees easily. Um, mm -hmm. There have been some studies where within an hour, definitely at least 120 degrees yeah. yeah and so so what are the laws right now like in New Jersey well in New Jersey uh, there are two specific laws there under New Jersey law there's title 4 which is specific for domestic and agricultural animals okay. in New Jersey um, there is 22-17 which is a criminal charge and 22-26 which is a civil charge both stating if an if an individual is to leave an animal in a car under inhumane conditions which would be the overheating and if the animal's welfare and health is at risk then it's a crime um, mm. it can lead to fines from between two hundred and fifty dollars to a thousand dollars so what are people thinking do you think Liz? you know a lot of times people just think I'm in and out five minutes but really I mean it's it's only a couple of seconds where something can make a turn for the worst or they get held up you know I was at a convenience exactly. store uh, mm -hmm. earlier today and uh, you know, I was the second in line. I was, oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, but there was a complication, and you know, mm -hmm. I, I was—I should have been in there for two minutes, and mm -hmm. I wound up being in there for ten minutes. Absolutely, know. yeah. You never know what can happen. I yeah. mean, people always get held up. Something happens. It's never yeah. as short as you expect. Okay. What other uh, excitement are you uh, encountering here in the summer of uh, being an ACO? <laughs> um, well, with the summer coming on, we have a lot of kittens in the shelter. Sure. We have a lot of uh, young wildlife around the area. Um, Be aware of rabies and um, make sure that your dog and cat is, uh, is current on their exactly. rabies vaccines. We stress that years. all the time through mm. low-cost and free rabies clinics throughout mm -hmm. our towns. Um, we love having big turnouts for things like that, so it's definitely better to be prepared and safe for the summer. Okay. Hey, Liz, thanks for joining us. Keep up the great work. Thank Keep you, those sir. dogs cool. Thank you. And cats. You don't <laughs> see as many cats in the hot uh, summer. So, folks, still to come, we got Dr. Deb, and she's standing by to talk about more summer safety issues, plus adoptions and Pet of the Week, too. So stick around. There's a lot more to come on the Pet Stop, only here on News 12 New Jersey. Leaving your dog in the car this summer isn't the only way he or she can get heat stroke. Plus, there are some other hot weather issues that we want you to know about. Welcome back to the Pet Stop. I'm Dr. Brian Voynick. Joining me now to talk about more pet summer safety issues is our good friend, Dr. Depp. That's Dr. Deborah Breitstein from Animal Health Care in Marlboro. Always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for having us back. And you got your new adopted pooch next to you? Two years new, so yeah. she's been accustomed for a little bit already. A lot different from our old friend, Buddy. Yes. The bud man. Yeah. yeah. So, Dr. Deb, how do dogs get heat stroke? What's the mechanism well, here? What's going on? It's not just cars that uh, we find dogs in, but the yeah. summer itself. I mean, when the weather's hot, humidity is high, dogs can't sweat. They pant, they need extra water. They can just be outside in a normal environment mm -hmm. and overheat. Sure. And sure. it happens very quickly, and people aren't aware of it, um, especially as we were talking about with Mia having a dark coat. But you could, any, think how you'd feel if you were in a fur coat in the middle of summer. So mm. you need extra hydration, more water, and uh, it's We've it's got dangerous. an image there of a pug, so tell us, are there certain breeds that are more uh, super sensitive? Well, there are some breeds that have more difficulty breathing. Those cute little pushed in face sure. dogs, those sure. pugs and brachycephalic dogs, yeah. really don't have a lot of sinus space, so they are in uh, greater risk for heat stroke and overheating with the humidity. Right, and they don't sweat like we do. Tell nope. us about their methods of uh, of uh, temperature control. They pant mm -hmm. to evaporate. They can actually use and, and eliminate excess heat through their ear flaps and their paw pads. Right. And those are areas that you want to attend to if you think an animal is overheating, dog, cat, or even sometimes rabbits that are outside in hutches. So it's really important to consider all animals that are outside, domestic animals that is, wildlife. Right. Really well, there you go. An excessive panting. You brought us a list along here of some signs. And that surely is because the tongue, as you mentioned, is one of the organs in the dog that uh, is responsible for getting heat out of the body. Right, and panting can be a sign of uh, anxiety as well, which you would be anxious if your body temperature is elevating and you're about to have a crisis. Sure. 
Sure. Uh, staring as well, explain that. Um, not being responsive to commands, staring in space, looking like they're not quite paying attention to what's going on. Because what's happening is the brain and the heart are being preserved, but even those functions do tend to be affected mm -hmm. as more and more heat stroke signs become apparent. Right, and anxiety or an anxious expression. And almost like they just don't know where they're at. And you combine that with panting, the situational issue, and it's time to call the veterinarian. Mm. How about refusal to obey uh, commands? My puppy is often, does, does that mean my puppy has heat stroke? No, <laughs> it's actually a combination of, you know, you have to know your own dog, sure. your own dog behavior. If mm -hmm. they're not going to sit when you ask them to sit, that's not something you can do. But it basically is a disorientated situation where they almost seem like they're out of it, like the lights are on, no one's home, mm. and that's the kind of situation you're looking for. And warm, dry skin to the touch, uh, feeling um, hot. The dry nose thing is an old wives' tale, Yeah, isn't cold, it? wet, warm, dry, <laughs> doesn't mean anything. The only way, truthfully, to know their body temperature is a rectal thermometer, which, yep. you know, in a situation like that, I'm not sure you're going to run for your bathroom cabinet to grab that, right. and I'd rather see you reach for the phone to but call But it is important, and again, <clears throat> normal is 102, so yes. we get worried about that. Exactly. Uh, right. And uh, also vomiting and ultimately collapse. And it is an emergency. This is not something that needs to wait. Better to be safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. If your veterinarian's not available, the local emergency room for animals, the veterinary emergency services in our communities, are set up 24-7, 365. So don't mm. wait. This right, is not right. something to wait for your favorite veterinarian the next day. Agreed. This is you need to act right now. now. Mm -hmm. And so it's a can, life or death what, situation. What can you do in the meantime as you're preparing, getting your dog over to the vet? First of all, remove them from the heat if you sure. can. Put them in a cooler area, even if you're going from direct sun to shade. Cool them off with some water. Now remember, your garden hose has also been baking out in the yeah. sun too, so make sure you run that water before you start spraying it on your dog because you could add a burn as insult to injury. Mm -hmm. So let the water run. Cool or tepid water is best. Don't throw them in the pool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most dogs, people think that they can swim. Not all dogs can. And, and a dog that's disoriented, that's not a situation you want to be in. Move them to the house, inside if you can. Bring a fan out if you can. Most of us have some type of electrical outlets outside. Um, if you're on a walk, that's a tough thing because, you know, your dog might be in collapse and if you have a 100-pound dog, you can't lift them, you know, I would call for help, see if there's somebody neighbor-wise or on your cell phone. And Good advice. This, you yeah. know, call 911 because it is an emergency. Pad abrasions <clears throat> are common this time of year too and uh, our newest doctor, Dr. John Amaral, just had this uh, dog come in with a limping problem, was gone for a couple of hours and uh, he took this picture uh, on our iPad and we sent it over. You can see that pad is so sore, isn't it? It's, it's got to hurt. It's extremely painful and mm -hmm. dogs do this a lot just outside on hot pavement or running around the pool while you're in the pool. They don't, they don't stop. They're motivated to play and run around and it's not until that night or the next day that you notice, or if you do, that they're lame. You look at their pads and that can get infected very quickly. Yeah, and, and I, I always recommend, you know, uh, before you have your dog on the road, on the pavement, take your sandals off and walk on it yourself and right. just see. Sometimes it's a scorcher. It's too hot for you to be doing it, whether it's hot or cold, too cold for you to be out, you know, then it's probably not appropriate for your animals. Leave right, them home, right. leave them in the air right. conditioning, don't take them to the car for errands, that kind and of thing. And we've got too. ticks and fleas and heartworms and all the other stuff. Uh, you, you brought along some, uh, some of the products that uh, that you use and it's going to uh, be a bad bug it here is and I mean I think the mosquito is New Jersey state bird this time <laughs> okay. of year. I mean we really have to be on the lookout for uh, products that work ask your pet's vet mm -hmm. for suggestions for the lifestyle the risk factors for your pets yeah. all animals in the household should be protected even the cats that don't go outside well mosquitoes come in yeah and uh, that's a way one that bite. yeah one yeah. bite and then you have also an infestation so products yes. are variable every veterinarian has yeah, their see, see your veterinarian we're, we're seeing so many ticks in, in the northwestern uh, part of the state in Morris County that uh, a lot of resistance and we happen to be using that Vectra as, yeah. as you have there too as uh, and then they you know effective. removing ticks you have to be careful <laughs> about too because if you're removing a tick you can potentially become contaminated with any of the ticks. I love that but instrument Dr. Deb. I left Dr. Spoon. Tepper <clears throat> when he brought this in I said are you yeah, kidding me yeah. and it works great because yeah. you can just scoop that, that tick off edge on it. And then flush it down the toilet or down the sink. Yeah, oftentimes when you use mosquito forceps, uh, you know, you either have too much dog or too much tick. And this has that little notch in it. It works very, very well. We, it does. We, we use these all the time. And then, of course, a flea comb to check for other hitchhikers, which, very, oh, sorry, Mia. Very fancy tip, yeah, uh, it works, flea comb here. It works very nicely. You can <laughs> see flea dirt, which looks like yeah. coarse ground black pepper, yeah. or the actual fleas themselves. Absolutely. So okay. Hello, my lovey. Well, looks like you will we'll be very prepared for the summer, but uh, keep them cool, and, and uh, thanks for all your advice. Uh, my pleasure. Anything okay. else, you can always ask your pet's vet for advice. Absolutely. Thanks, Dr. Deb.
Folks, now it's time for a pet of the week. And we have one picture from Micah Zaylor of uh, Scarlet. And this is their lab chow mix, and she's a year old. She's a rescue dog that they adopted from the North Shore Animal League last May. And she's a real sweetheart, as you can see. She thinks that their son Mason is one of her puppies. <laughs> so thanks again for sending those pictures. If you'd like your pet to be pet of the week, send us some pictures or even videos. You could mail them to the address you see on the screen or email them to thepetstop at news12.com. But be always sure to tell us why your pet should be pet of the week. We'll be right back with this week's adoptees. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Pet Stop on News 12 New Jersey. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich, and joining me now is Alicia Samadi from the Liberty Humane Society in Jersey City. She's got Duke and Junior. Tell us about Junior. What a cute little kitten. He was born in the shelter. He has four other sisters and brothers. And you got a lot more there, don't you? Absolutely. It's kitten season. Every day we get more kittens in. Mm. So we're open seven days a week. Everybody can come in and we need fosters as well so they don't they okay, get Okay, so you don't have to commit to adopt. You can just foster a, a kitten because you've got enough of them. Absolutely. Yeah, that would take the strain off, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. And tell us about Duke. What do you say, Duke? Duke is one sweetheart. of our old fellas. Yeah. He had a tough uh, situation there. He, he was in the apartment when his owner died suddenly. Yeah, huh? so a few weeks ago he's been oh. with us and you know, we just really want him to live his golden he's years. He's real fit too, you know, he's trim, his teeth looked excellent, I checked those out and and he's uh, he's for the low maintenance person, right? He's Absolutely. just low key. Very low key, he's unaffected by anything. <laughs> children, <laughs> bulletproof. Yeah, children, other dogs, cats obviously, he's just a great companion for low maintenance, low energy family. Oh, that's great Alicia. So I hope we can get this guy home real soon because and he really And fostering is also an option for him. That's right. It, just yeah. to get him out of the shelter and live his golden years with right. a family. Right. Okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot, and uh, I hope you can get some more, uh, not only adoptions, but support as far as, you know, volunteers, foster yes. folks, and so forth. Every day we need more people, the yeah. better. Okay. Well, thanks again. Thank you. You're welcome. And also, folks, we'd like to, everybody to know about the open house that we're having at the American Animal Hospital in Randolph. The 24th annual open house is Saturday, June the 9th from 1 to 4 p.m. Lots of fun stuff for the kids, like face painting and some cool wild animals, uh, plus a pet costume contest. That's 1202 Sussex Turnpike in Randolph. We hope to see you there. For more information on anything about today's show or past shows, just log on to our website, news12.com, click on the features, and scroll down to the pet stop. You'll find all the information you need right there. And that's all the time we have left on this week's show. I'm Dr. Brian Buenick. Thanks so much for watching. And always remember, a healthy pet's a happy pet. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.